have to come up with new things to say about these yeah. free agent players, but with Carlos Beltran, it's really easy. Yeah, it's, he is a phenomenal player, and he's a switch hitter that hits in the middle of the order that uh, is used to producing at a very high level and really knows how to play the game. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. He looked up to Bernie Williams when he was younger, and it was one of the reasons he became a switch hitter. So I'm really happy that we have another switch hitter in our lineup because it gives us a lot of flexibility. Joe, you've become very adept at this over the years. You've had an older team, and, and you, you rest guys a lot, and, and you keep them fresh. Is that something that you have to talk with Beltron about in spring training, or is it just a feel thing as you move along? Well, I'll bring it up to him in spring training, and, and we'll go along, and I'll give him some, you know, all these guys some DH days in spring training so they can kind of get a feel of what it's like. Um, it's obviously easier at our park with the cage right down below, and it's easier to get loose, but I, I think it's something that I have to manage, and I have to, you know, be concerned about it at all times because we don't want these guys breaking down, but by not having a full-time DH, it gives me the flexibility to rest him sometimes as in a DH role. How important is it for you to not only have him in the lineup, but now Teixeira yeah. around the switch hitters, and the fact that you don't always have to make some of those late-game changes, you can just leave those sluggers in. Yeah, and it, it allows us to break up our left-handed hitters, and it, allow, it puts a lot of pressure on the end of the club. When do they use their number one left-hander? Who are they going to use it against? So having the switch hitters, which we've always had in the past, um, is very, very tough for other managers to manage you know, against our lineup. Now, one of the things we hear uh, with Carlos over the last couple of years is maybe he's lost a step in the outfield. And from studying tape of him do you feel that's the case or you think he's still a proficient right fielder no I think he's going to be a good right fielder um our right fielder is a little smaller so if he you know if he has <laughs> lost that a half a step that that works well but I mean as, as these guys get older I mean they're, they're going to lose some speed but I mean you got to remember this was a, a great center fielder so it's not like he was you know starting out as an average left fielder I mean this is a very good outfielder still you also by the way have a couple speedsters right now in left and Gardner and center and Ellsbury that can cover a lot of ground so that'll help as well and when you look at all the other components Soriano Ichiro Vernon Wells have you even kind of wrapped your head around what you can do with all these guys yeah I'm gonna have to you know make it work and keep everyone active and keep everyone in I know Soriano likes playing the outfield as well so he's gonna play the outfield and you know you can kind of rotate the DH is what you can do and it gives us some options with switch hitters when we're facing left-handers you can maybe rest one of your left-handers and it should work well we talked with uh, with Carlos about this um, active players he has the highest batting average of anybody uh, in postseason play why is a player able to succeed we know that Jeter's able to do that he just said that he has a calm that comes over him why are some guys good at that and some guys not well the first thing is we got to get him to October then if that's the case but I think he's able to relax in the big moment you know, I, I saw I handled the questions in the press conference. He was never phased. You know, when he was asked about the Mets, he was very complimentary and understands how things work. So I think he's able to relax in the big moment, and that's why he's successful. Let's talk a little more about you have other players like that. I brought this up. Derek Jeter is very much the same way. Guys that are battle-tested. Does that make your job any easier as you head into what you hope is a playoff situation? Well, I think it does, you know, because we're going to be battle-tested all year long in our division. So I think it makes it easier when you have guys – that are used to playing in the postseason, used to succeeding in high leverage situations, and it gives us a better chance to win. Now, it's around Christmas time, and usually people open presents on the 25th. You've been getting presents over really? the last month. That's right. Now, do you sit at your kitchen table and doodle out lineups? And if you do, we want you to give us the opening day lineup right now. You know, I have started <laughs> a, a little bit, and, and a lot of it depends on you know where Tex and Jeet are opening day. We expect them to be fully healthy. I mean, there's, you know, we expect that, but you still have to see where they're at and uh, if if they are back our lineup is going to be extremely deep but you're busy wrapping gifts this time of year, I right? Am. You're sitting at the table and wrapping. Well, no, Santa does that. So I, yeah, I, I just only have to wrap yeah. a few. So um, for me, you know, I got a, I got my wife's gift, and I have to wrap a few others, and I go from there. How close, Joe, do you feel this is a complete team, or do there still have to be work in the starting rotation and the bullpen? Well, I still think there's a little bit of work to be done, and, and Brian is doing that, and our front office is doing that. Uh, but I like what we've done to our team so far.